Welcome, my name is Drayton Michaels, and we're going to have about 10 minutes or so of dog play shaping video. We're going to start out with Stella and Lulu. Lulu is our Boston Terrier. Stella is the tan and white American Pitbull Terrier. These dogs haven't had a lot of history together, so we're doing short disengagements. Leave it all the way. One, two, three. Yes. Good girl. Wait, sit, stay. By giving quick rewards and continuing the play, those reinforcers stay nice and strong and the dogs learn that it's okay to disengage because play is coming soon. Lulu, leave it. Yes. Wait. Stay. Okay, go play. I tell my clients all the time, think like a referee, have your rules and use them, and make sure you're observant, implementing kind consequences, and rewarding quick, then you'll have successful dog play. Even though Stella's not sitting, and I gave her a hand signal for sit, and she's laying down, I let it slide. Now we have Penny and Callie. Penny at the time was being fostered, and Callie was uh, one of the dogs in the house that she was living with. And Callie's a one-year-old American Pit Bull Terrier, our black and white dog. And Penny is our gray and white 10-week-old puppy. And we're gonna be doing lots of timeouts with her. Oops, there she grabbed my arm with her mouth, so we time her out. Timeouts do not have to be frightening or scary. They do have to be issued right as the unwanted behavior is happening. Now we're gonna give Penny another chance to see if she can listen during play. Penny doesn't fully disengage on the leave it, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to lift her up out of play for the timeout and practice some gentle restraint. Cause I'm pretty sure in her new home, someone's gonna pick her up at least once. And don't put your face near the puppy's face. Now we have uh, two dogs that I work with on a fairly regular basis, Bond and Jewel. Bond is the black and white American Pit Bull Terrier and Jewel is the brown American Pit Bull Terrier. Jewel, leave it all the way. Yes. Bond, look. Yes. What I want you guys to take right, away from this segment is the environment. The environment's very large. I have a lot of ground to cover, so I need to be right next to the dogs at all times so that my rewards and consequences can be issued quickly and effectively. Leave it? Yes. 
I also like to use toys during dog play. It takes the focus off of the dogs and puts it onto an external object that the dogs can chase. In this case, Bond's gonna keep chasing that blue ball and Jewel will sooner or later get tired of chasing him. Jewel, leave it all the way. Thank you. Now you'll notice I didn't mark her with a yes because I did not treat her for disengaging for the hump. Her reward was freedom. I didn't time her out. Now in this video, I don't have to stick too close to these dogs because I know all of their histories and I know all of their bite inhibitions. And well, sometimes you just get lucky like that and all the dogs work out really well together and you can just let them play freely. And that's the case with Keisha, Montana and Rascal. Notice all of the loose body movements by the dogs. Notice how the dogs fall over on their backs and invite each other to play. This is a good sign of social deference and it signals that play is probably gonna turn out pretty well. The I chase you, you chase me role reversal is another good sign that things are going well. Notice how Montana hangs off to the side while Keisha and Rascal play, and then she comes back in. All this is a sign of role reversal. Even when it gets a little rough, it stays loose. Watch how these dogs stay loose and keep playing even though it looks rough. Notice how even when it's getting rough again, things stay nice and loose and the dogs practice role reversals and social deference. Some dogs just come this way and they have great innate play skills and they have lots of social deference, while other dogs need to be shaped. Remember, regardless of what kind of dog you have, the most important thing to do is think like a referee, stick close to your dogs in play, and make sure that you're ready to implement rewards or consequences effectively. I hope you've enjoyed this short video of shaping dog play, and I hope you have a little bit better insight now to social deference, dog body language, and how you, as a dog referee, can help better shape dog play. If you'd like more information, please contact me, Drayton Michaels, at pitbullguru.com or urbandogs.com. This has been a K9 Sun Media presentation.